This video is all about evergreen shrubs that can be kept in the two foot range for part shade or shade conditions. And we're gonna jump right in with gumpo azaleas. Gumpo azaleas have been around for a long time. These are traditional, traditional azaleas and they happen to have a dwarf low mounding habit. You think this thing's probably been pruned on a lot, but it really hasn't. Uh, this is a pink gumpo. Gumpo azaleas are available in pinks and whites. Uh, there's another uh, dwarf variety called chin soy that I used to grow as well. It's a little bit deeper of a pink than this, but also has an extremely compact habit. When we're talking about in the, uh, the sun version of this very low growing two foot evergreen plants version, I talked about encore azaleas. They definitely need a little bit more sun, but these traditional azaleas like to be in the part shade or shade. And as Steph just pointed out before we started shooting this, these are a great substitute for one of those low growing hedging plants that you would have uh, out in the full sun, something like dwarf yopon hollies, which actually can take some shade, uh, and some other of our low growing Japanese hollies and that kind of thing. It has that look. So even this white gumpo is not blooming right now, but look what a full dense habit it has. And again, really don't ever have to prune on these. If you do need to prune on them, you prune on them right after they flower. That's really important with these traditional azaleas. Don't do any hacking on them except for once a year right after they bloom you can cut them down to about if you want to keep them two feet in height you cut them down to about 18 inches they'll grow back out three four five inches over the, the rest of the season set their flower buds in the fall and then bloom beautifully in the early spring we rarely come across a garden tour in a shade garden here in the south that doesn't have prostrate plum use in it uh, this is uh, just an amazing drought tolerant plant we've seen these on slopes and banks growing incredibly well in dry shade conditions, competing with very well established trees. This one is almost a ground cover. It can be kept narrower and then turned into a mound, kind of like this one is, but it probably won't ever get more than, you know, 16, 18 inches in height, something like that, about what this one is doing right now. And it'll get about as wide as you want to let it get. So you can control the edge of it very easily. It's in no hurry. When you see one of these, these are going to be a little more pricey. Uh, these little ground cover plum use, they're going to be a little more pricey than other things. It can take, these cuttings take almost a year to get well rooted enough to transplant. And then they can take another year uh, or more, almost two years to fill out a single gallon container. And then this is probably another year to a year and a half of growth in a three gallon. So we're looking, this one I have in my hand, it wouldn't surprise me if it's five years from a rooted cutting, at least four, uh, but probably more like five years. There's another group that's slightly taller than this on the plum use. And so Utopia plum you I've shown on the channel before, Duke Gardens plum you I've shown on the channel before, Drupaceae is one I showed over at Adcox Nursery in a tour video uh, last year. All three of those are gonna say three to four feet, maybe five feet on the tags, but all of them could be kept more into down to that two two and a half, three foot range if you wanted to. But this is probably the one to plant if you want one that's under two feet in height is the prostrate plum. Next up is this variegated radicans gardenia. This is another one that you definitely wanna be cautious with if you have wet shade or part shade conditions. They definitely do not like wet feet. They need to be, they need to dry out some. We have ours in a slightly raised bed behind some annuals uh, at the house and it's doing okay. The, Jan the December freeze knocked it back a bit, but it seems to be coming back out of that just fine. So again, well-drained soil. This one is almost ground cover-like. It will eventually pile up on itself and end up 14, 15 inches in height. It'll get about as wide as you want to let it get. You can give it a haircut whenever. This variegated radicans does not bloom quite as heavily as the regular green radicans or the other gardenias uh, that does have very fragrant flowers, but sometimes on variegated plants, white flowers don't show up all that well. But when it's in bloom, you'll see them and they are very, very fragrant. And it really adds a pop of variegated color to a part shade space. These will be listed for full sun or part shade. Typically, uh, most gardenias will, but I, I really think that in part shade conditions is where they really thrive. Uh, the variegated one can go in slightly even deeper shade. We're over at Swift Creek Nursery down in Johnston County, North Carolina. I used to do a lot of uh, I've known Lanny Thomas, the owner, for a very, very long period of time. Uh, the original garden center that I worked at and Steph worked at, we unloaded trucks from him. And then I had my nursery was just a couple of miles from here and we would exchange a lot of information, a lot of plants. I've been 
you know, a lot, any kind of crazy weather event or anything like that, Lanny was always helping me, uh, helping me out as a young nurseryman. So I was always appreciative of those conversations because they were really very helpful, probably saved me a lot of money over the years. Uh, this Sarcococca is Sarcococca confusa. This one does not stay as compact as Sarcococca humilis. This one can be kept into that two to three foot range, but it's gonna wanna try to get bigger and you can probably see that behind me a bit where it wants to stretch out a bit more. So if you can find Sarcococca humilis, that's the one you would want. That's the dwarf sweet box. But these are great evergreen shrubs. They're gonna get fragrant flowers that are kind of insignificant along the stems. I can actually see where the berries have set, where the flowers were uh, from the late winter time. It's one of the earliest flowering shrubs that we have. We have a little cluster, a cluster of three of these at the house. Great, rich, dark, shiny foliage, great element in a shady space. If you put something like that uh, variegated, like that variegated gardenia next to this, where it's you know slightly smaller and has that pop of color, this dark green foliage behind it, they look fantastic together. This is the regular radicans gardenia or ground cover gardenia. These can reach somewhere right in that two foot range and again, slightly wider than tall, a little more vigorous than the uh, variegated uh, one that we showed you over there. It's also quite a bit more floriferous. Uh, these have tons of flower buds on them. We're shooting this toward the end of May. This is about the time of year that you would expect to see gardenias blooming. This is a rather new crop, I think by fall, these will be completely covered across the top. Frequently, again, you're gonna see gardenias listed for full sun or part shade, but the best radicans gardenias I've ever seen are in shady, in shady conditions, in well-drained soils. All the things we're showing you in this video are gonna be great things to use under low windows. There's so many houses now with, you know, that are built on slab, they're, uh, the windows are lower to the ground and it's harder and harder for folks to find things that can fit under those spaces. Or maybe you have two rows in a bed and it's a, you know, six feet wide and you had room for something that was three to four feet in the back, but you're trying to figure out what to go in front of it. All the things that are in this video are great choices for that in part shade conditions. I started the idea for this video is uh, 10 shrubs that you could keep around two feet in height uh, in part shade or shade conditions. And now I'm standing next to a plant that never becomes a woody shrub. Uh, this is cast iron plant or Aspidistra. There are a lot, a lot of cultivars of these. Uh, we have uh, several at the house. You'll see this is the solid green version. And a lot of times when you go to stores, you're gonna see the solid green version for the most part, but there are incredible ones. We have one called Asahi, it has white tips up at the very top. We have striped ones, we have spotted ones. There are lots and lots of named cultivars of cast iron plants. These stay evergreen through the winter. If they take any damage, uh, you can just take leaves that were damaged during the winter and cut those down to the ground and they very quickly get replaced uh, during the spring. Uh, you can generally cut them back if you wanted to, but there's really no reason for it. You can just leave the leaves up from last year. Once they get about two years old though, they do get a little tattered and you can cut them back. But I think this is a great vertical element in a part shade bed that will only get up to that two, maybe two and a half foot range and then perfectly fine. It's also incredibly drought tolerant. So if you have a space that's slightly under an overhang, maybe doesn't get quite as much water uh, as some other spaces in your yard or in your shade garden, these are perfect for that. Here's another non-shrub evergreen that I'd like to point out. This is a holly fern. Uh, I'm sticking these two right in the middle of this video just because I wanted to show you a couple other options. You don't necessarily have to have a you know woody shrub to do this. Uh, these holly ferns look fantastic uh, pretty much year round. One of my favorite foliage plants we see. Again, this one's not going to take the dry shade uh, like the Aspidistra. So you would use you know the, the cast iron plant over there in really, really dry shade, deep shade conditions. And you could use this in slightly more moist conditions. If you had a patio or something that tend to retain some moisture around it, that kind of thing, perfect plant for that. We've moved over to the house and we can show you some things in the ground here that are under two feet in height and they've been in the ground for a while. So you know we can kind of confirm that they're very easy to keep quite low. This is Mojo Pittosporum. This is a Southern Living Plant Collection uh, variety. Uh, the Pittosporum will bloom with kind of in small interior fragrant flowers and they're very, very fragrant when they flower. This one isn't necessarily grown for the flowers. It's grown for this amazing foliage. We have three of these in what amounts to a very dark area in our garden here in Raleigh, North Carolina. And by two o'clock or so, this is in the shade. Uh, it gets a little bit of direct sun on it. 
maybe 11 to two kind of dappled in and out. Uh, and it just performs beautifully back here. These, a lot of these shrubs for shade kind of need well-drained soil. This pittosporum is gonna be another example of that. It's not something that's gonna to wanna to stay wet. And so this area back in the back of the garden is perfect. It's a dry shade condition. Uh, we don't, we have, in fact, we have to water back here occasionally, even on some things that have been in the ground for a little while. So it's kind of the perfect space for these pittosporum, but they are just no maintenance. And when I say no maintenance, we planted these three. It was probably in a video. If you want to go back and find the video on the channel and nothing has been done to them since other than we've remulched around them a couple times since then. Great plant. Next up is this soft caress Mahonia really great evergreen soft textured plant. This is a great plant to add to a shady space. It's got this blue green soft foliage and pretty much a lot, really, really a lot of our shade plants have tend to have larger leaves. And so it contrasts beautifully with those types of plants. So we, as an example, here's another cast iron plant that we have. It's got a stripe in the middle of it as it's coming back. We cut that one completely back. As that's coming back, that broad leaf looks really fantastic with it. The tractor seat plant or the farfugium that's on the other side of it, again, it just contrasts beautifully with that soft texture of that soft caress Mahonia. We're in the process of doing some mulching. So you're seeing some mulch piles and a little bit of debris back here, but that little combo, that soft caress with any broad leaf, evergreen or non evergreen shade loving plant just looks amazing. Here's the green version of that Mojo Pittosporum that's in the back that has the variegation on it. This is Wheeler's Dwarf Pittosporum. This one will take a lot more sun, and in fact, you'll see on the tag, full sun or part shade. Uh, but I've had great success with this plant in sh part shade or even shade conditions. Again, it likes well-drained soil, so I think that's part of the placement of it and why people may not have all that much success with it in darker shaded spaces. It got pruned pretty harshly in a pruning video a few weeks back. And so here I've, it had cotton, it was up in this barberry, it was over here in these peonies, it was out onto the path over there. So I, I cut the width in half, but you can see almost no height was taken out of it. This is how tall it's gotten in almost three years being in the ground, it wanted to just trail outward like that. And so once a year, I can go back in here and just cut it back into the width that I wanna keep it or slightly smaller than I wanna keep it. And it'll just flush right back out from that. Again, it'll get those little orange scented, insignificant flowers, but very fragrant flowers uh, in the, during the uh, mid, middle spring time. Great plant, just an easy, easy plant. And again, you can put this one in a little more sun if you want to, but part shade conditions is perfectly fine as long as it's drying out between rains, which it's doing right now, and waterings. One other one that you can definitely use in the shade is boxwoods. And in fact, boxwoods are native to woodlands. Uh, we, we think about boxwoods frequently being planted out by uh, road signs at the front of subdivisions and things like that. But any of the, uh, almost all the boxwood species will tolerate lots and lots of shade. Uh, and of course they can be kept pretty much any size you wanna keep them. I would aim toward one that's only listed for two or three feet you know, in height, if you're looking for a variety, don't get one that, you know, says on the tag that it gets eight feet tall and upright and narrow and try to keep that two feet because it's going to look a little strange. But most of the lower growing mounding or doming boxwoods work perfectly fine in part shade conditions and they'll actually tolerate dry shade. Uh, and it's again, it's one of those things for some somehow in ornamental landscaping, I see them almost exclusively planted in the full sun. But when we go to really nice old established gardens. The boxwoods are doing fantastic in the shade. I'm gonna wrap this up with this Burning Love Lakothui. Uh, be careful, I'm not saying all Lakothui, you can keep two feet in height. In fact, uh, when we're uh, our native Lakothui to the Southeast United States, I've seen as tall as 15 and 18 feet in height and have trunks on them this big around. They're almost small trees uh, out, out in the wild. This is actually a Japanese uh, species right here and it has beautiful, new uh, burgundy foliage on it for a good portion of the season. Blooms with these white uh, flowers that hang down similar to how uh, blueberries flower. Quite showy when it flowered, quite showy when it's anytime it's actively growing. This one's been in the ground over two years and it's right at about two feet in height. I can prune it at this point if I wanna to try to keep it a little smaller, but its growth habit is to send this up like it's gonna be tall and then just kind of weep over like these are doing out on the side of it. So I'm probably gonna more likely control the width 
uh, than the height. Well, we have one other variegated Lakothui in the back garden that also can be kept very compact as well. But I love these. I love the texture of the leaf on these, similar to that soft caress Mahonia. Uh, again, this is another one that probably wants to be uh, moist, well-drained soil, not a, not a super, super wet space uh, for this burning love Lakothui. So there you go. There are 10 shrubs that stay evergreen and can be kept very, very small in your garden. Is there something in your area that you use as kind of the backbone in a shady space that stays small? Let us know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.